Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, sir. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. That's you good. Know? Yeah, new different night recording. Wednesday evening. Happy, happy hump day. Yeah, I wanted to record because tomorrow and Friday I have off work. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. And it just feels good to yeah. like not have to um, be like, oh, man, I can't do that because I got to record. I mean, I love rec recording with you on a weekly basis, but it, yeah. it just felt better. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Sometimes, as we were just talking and appreciating, you got to do things for self-care. Make sure you take care of yourself. So, yeah, it's very yeah. important. Very important. So I'm glad I'm glad you're getting a little bit of a little bit downtime. Yeah, we're going to talk about it just because I'm so curious of why you don't want to talk about the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. Because I kind of watched it, and when I say that, it means after you told me that you watched it, I randomly threw on Kind of Funny's reaction to it. Okay. And so I, I, I heard a lot. I really wasn't paying attention, though, because I don't want to... I don't want to have the trailer cloud my judgment of the movie. Yeah. Um, but I was curious because you you sent me a message and said they're trying too hard with mm -hmm. all the F-bombs. Yeah. And so my ears were peaked. I'm like, I want to hear all of this cursing. And I will be honest, because of that, I was like, I, I, I heard a little. I didn't hear too much, but maybe I watched the wrong version. <laughs> no, no. It was more... It wasn't so. It was more of a commentary on just the tone, yeah. more so than the number. I mean, mm -hmm. the number of fucks. I mean, I think it, it wasn't so much that. It was just more the tone of it. I mean, I don't don't get me wrong. I I liked the trailer. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did. Oh, the other part I did say was I was part glad I watched it because it, it, it's the the bit with the cocaine at the end. I mean that I, I was laughing out loud. Mm. But, but then uh, on the other hand, I was mad at myself for watching it because then I'm like, did I get the funniest all, bit? <laughs> all the funniest bits? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, you know, do I go to the theater now? And it's sort of like, oh, you know, I already saw that in the trailer. I mean, I'm sure there'll be tons of other things, but you know, it's, it's that eternal struggle that you and I, we've talked about many years on the podcast now, and especially Marvel trailers in particular. Yeah. Um, do they give too much away? And yeah. and so that's where I that's where I was sort of like before we started recording tonight, I posed the question to you: Did you watch it? One and two: Do you want to talk about it? Because you know, if folks, if you're listening to us, if you're thinking you're going to get all the like, you know, you know, Cassandra Nova and all those little details and that kind of stuff, we're not your podcast. No, go no, listen to no. kind of go listen to somebody else. We're just like we're folks who just like like you who just love talking about these things and, and fun and know a little bit of the lore maybe not so much on other things but yeah just, just yeah. put it out there <laughs> yeah i see the tone that i observed aligns itself with the previous two movies and we've we have also talked about our feelings about those two movies mm -hmm. so i don't i don't know We'll see, because there are some times when, yeah, they really do put the funniest bits in the movies, in, in the trailers, and then you watch the movie, and sometimes you're like, oh, I already saw that. And then sometimes you're like, you know, even with it in context now, it's even more funny. Yeah, exactly. And that's <laughs> you why can I, never yeah. tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. hard. And, and that's why it's, I have just, yeah. it's just a matter of, once you're in that theater watching it on the big screen and there are other people around you, like what will that environment and, and how will the, the movie like just speak for itself? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just, I just also, I mean, let's put the trailer aside. They continue to do such clever marketing. Oh, yeah, like oh, the yeah. whole, the whole new poster. That's a, that's a, um, a a a an allusion to the um logan poster i'm just mm -hmm. like come on yep. <laughs> <laughs> you you're just i just like the posters god i and then we never talk about posters because i'm like who cares but this is just genius concepts so yeah 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 i'm very 
Very cool. Um, so on that note, another good reason why we moved it to tonight was because Shogun dropped its final episode, episode 10, A Dream of a Dream last night. And we have both watched it. And um, so now we get to wrap up this, our talk on Shogun season one. And the IMDb um, summary says for this episode, in the wake of a tragic death, Blackthorn finally considers the true nature nature of Toronaga's plan. Um, Will, what are your overall thoughts as such a Shogun fanboy? Yes, I am a Shogun fanboy. Overall thoughts, uh, I found it to be a very satisfying finale. You know, no surprise there. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, uh, in complete transparency here, as I was watching the episode, there were some moments where I was wondering where they were going to go. Mm-hmm. And and there were a few moments where I was feeling like some some some... Feelings of anticlimactic started to resonate yeah. in me. Yeah. But then, but then they brought it home. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, this is how you close out a series. And I, I, I was very satisfied. But I, you know, but had the theme song on the loop. <laughs> <laughs> you would, you would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I. <laughs> I feel about this episode the way I feel about this entire season of Shogun. I should like this show more than I actually do. Mm. <laughs> At the end of the day, <laughs> there is nothing wrong with this. Is it anticlimactic? Absolutely. But does it make sense in context of the story that we've been given? Absolutely. <laughs> like, yep. like, I just, it, everything makes sense to an extent. Mm, yeah. Um. But at the same time, I think it really is kind of like, to your point, it, there is like, it's anticlimactic just because it's much more like a prologue as opposed to an actually con- actual conclusion, I mm-hmm. feel. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which is fine. And I'm used to, I mean, go back to Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones has a lot of like their penultimate episodes are better than their finales. Yes. So so I I totally understand that. It's just it's just that overall this show I I should I respect it. There is nothing wrong with it, but I'm also not in love with it. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I think it's because of I'm not in love with all of the characters. I'm in love with maybe a handful. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were you brought up um, some spots where you thought that like where you were really feeling that anti or where they're gonna go. Um, yeah. Do you want to start with one of those? The very beginning with uh, with, with Blackthorn uh, be, lying there on his deathbed. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was like, and you know, and, and one thing about this episode, these episodes all overall is the titles have really done a good job of sort of capturing the spirit and, and the, uh, and the theme of the episode very, very well. Sometimes, you know, the titles are just titles. People don't pay attention to them, but they really did a dream of a dream. Uh, this, you know, cause it was one of those things where I was just like, huh? Where, where, you know, are we, are we going to get, you know, when they talked about, you know, did you, you know, whatever the kids, grandkids asked to like, did you get that from the savages? And I think made a comment about the, the, the maybe a, a chip in the sword or something like that. And, and then as the show started to progress, I was, I, I guess it kind of set me up wanting to see where that was coming from. Mm-hmm. And, and then, so of course, later now, you know, as we get further in episode, as we'll talk later this evening, we, you know, we we realized that um, we weren't looking at the future. There it was actually Blackthorn, present day Blackthorn, in the story was like imagining how things were going to turn out for himself. But mm-hmm. you know, but I thought they really did a good job of like, to, at least for me, it just it, it, it created an expectation of of what that. Per- at that time, as I was watching it real time, thought it was a flashback, looking for that place, and then and it never 
it didn't come the way I thought it was going to. So that's that's where it kind of where I was like, where are they going with this? But as I said, other things in the story really, really fleshed out that opening scene better and, and really explained what was actually going on there. Uh, that after everything transpired, then with you know, with you know getting to Fiji and and and, and Blackthorn on the lake. Um, yeah. That you know, and and we see that the crucif you know, Mariko's crucifix is there with them. That I was like, ah, that's what they were doing there, you know. And, and that's when I, and that's what that's where I was like, yeah, I'm satisfied. That that that, that, that I love that that whole sequence there with with him and Fuji. So they were one. dumping they were dumping her remains as well. Um. Well, yeah. I think, well, the cross. Remember. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, I, I guess I'm confused because I know that they dumped they her, dumped, her family. Yeah. yeah, her son yeah. and husband's right. And, yeah, and they took yeah, and then they took out Black Torn took out Mariko's cross. Right. And then Fuji was like, "You should be the la- you know, you should hold her last." And he dropped it into the water. Okay. Okay. I I don't know. I I think I I blinked. When he yeah. dropped it, <laughs> well, <laughs> and they, they dropped it. And they show and they show it like sinking into the into the into the into the ocean. I, I was like, oh, I don't have to read anymore. So let me look at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens there. Uh, <laughs> I I can, yeah, see it. Yeah. Like, like this is another reason why I'm not sold on this show is because I'm I'm not invested. I was never invested in Mariko Blackthorn like as a couple. Mm. So, mm, so mm. to me, no, yeah, you, you were more Mar- Mariko and uh, and uh, Father Vito. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't, I don't. I don't I, I, misunderstand me. I found Bentaro to be a more fascinating character because of the choices yeah. Yeah. that they made with him. Not necessarily. I wasn't saying I. There. Okay. I'm, I'm just joking just, with you. I'm just joking with you from throwing line you had last week. <laughs> in a very harmful way. So just let me be clear. I was never like a fan of them being married or together. I just think that people villainized him more than they actually should have based on the the things that were done. I mean, anyways. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I know. I know we uh, and if you folks go back and listen to our discussion on that, because we we had a, we went for a quite a bit on, on how uh, how he was bit how Sarah felt he was being overly dumped on when I when I pretty much dumped on him pretty hard, I guess. Yes, yeah. yes, because yeah. Will played right into what the writers want you to do. <laughs> me, I'm like, no, 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 I don't, I don't care what you want me to do. Yeah. I yeah. don't understand. No, uh, no, but I, but I was thinking, but two, I think it's a good, this is a good segue to talk about Mariko and um, her, the, the, the deal that she made uh, with mm-hmm. Father Alibido. Uh, um, well, because, she didn't just make that deal, Tornaga made it too. Yeah, but she spared Blackthorn's life. Uh, that that was more, and Tornaga and both Tornaga, of them both of them did. Yeah, with the ship and how, and it, and they sold that very very well in my opinion, uh, especially with the using you know, with the Christian Raiders and seeing like the you know, decapitated heads there on the on the spikes and in the in Andro the the village. Um, so yeah, yeah, they yeah. they it was for both the viewers and the characters themselves. It was. It was a very good uh, distraction. Distraction. Yeah. Distraction. Yeah. I don't know if it was a distraction so much as trying to get you to think one thing um, when really the other is going on. You know, with Marco's death, the whole the fallout from it. You know, as far as Jabba uh his his guilt. <laughs> he had his Lady Macbeth moment. <laughs> He and had a lot of weird moments. Yeah. I mean, it was his guilt, insanity almost, him being hit. I mean, let's take it back to the first time yeah. or how we're introduced to him. He has an obsession with death. Yeah, yeah. And and we see him throughout the season kind of circle it. And then in this episode, witnessing Mariko sacrifice herself, knowing he's the cause of it. This is the one time where his his uh, character kind of, I don't know, kind of like, like um, wasn't as 
I think it got a little muddled on his character because mm-hmm. I still don't quite understand how he ended up in there with them. I, I still don't know. He so he let the he let the No, he, I understand that. Yeah. But then like did he go back to his quarters? I mean No, so as 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 the fighting was progressing whenever he let the ninjas in, not they're not the ninjas, well, forerunners of the ninjas in. Um he you know, as as they were he he was trying to like play it, you know, his, his job is shuge. So yeah, I let these people in, but then he started to like pretend like he was trying to defend Marco and Blackthorn and all the rest of them, and they all ended up getting you know caught into in that room. Um, so that's how he ended up he ended up in yeah. there because he was just, just being his usual duplicit self. Yeah, yeah, survivalist. That's yeah. what the word. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so and so he has some shell shock, I think, from all of that. That leads to him just being more messy. And Ishido lets him go <laughs> back. And um, but Toronaga, like both of these guys who he's been like trying to play both sides with, ends up disowning him. Mm-hmm. And then um Toronaga demands that he kills um kills himself. So commit Sark Piku. And um, I just I I I I find it I f- like as anticlimactic as it was. My favorite character on the show finally gets let in on the plan, yep. and as one Toranaga tells to, and he like suddenly he's our avatar to understanding. Like we're not gonna see the quote-unquote battle Mm -hmm. that didn't shed any blood no 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 we're just gonna hear about it (laughs) (laughs) and um and the story is gonna conclude um so so the the overarching story of of toranaga's battle with ishido comes to a head and we get the whole plan unveiled to yabushige um right before he's about to right before he um kills himself and and i just like that's again why he stuck out to me is because even at the end like he finally gives us the answers we've been looking for yeah (laughs) only to die which he's wanted to yeah yeah Yeah. and his i mean everything about yabashige he was true to himself to the end even like even with his death plans like feed me to the dogs (laughs) yeah Yep, feed me to the dogs. I want the, they're hungry, and yeah. I don't know. It's it's very interesting, um, and that's again why I have a lot of respect for the writing of this show, mm-hmm. is because the the whole co- um, cultural perspective and also individual perspective on life and death yeah. that's played throughout the entire season and really this whole episode like like it's much more philosophical about life and death um as as we see even blackthorn attempt to commit seppuku this episode um but but tornaga denies him Mm -hmm. and and just because blackthorn makes him laugh well Blackthorn makes them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. I mean it's, sometimes it's not the grandest thing. It's just like you know. <laughs> makes them laugh, and maybe he can help build a a Japanese navy. I don't know. I maybe. don't know. He he he's apparently picking on uh, up on Japanese real quickly. So so he. They don't need yeah. a translator no more. Um, well, yeah, but then, but of course, we, but we they don't need a formal translator. But we do learn that uh, uh, Murage, you know, he did, you know, he, the spy that we called, you know, we at yeah. Mexico, um, you know, he, he also, we we learn more about him as far as the fact that he, you know, he speaks Portuguese just like Blackthorn and um, and you know, he, you know Tornado had dispatched him to. To you know, be a to be a spy, but he became so, um, and so in, in embedded that he actually ended up adopting the faith. Uh, you know, so. Uh, but I, I really liked how they they, they 
close the loop on that character. I mean, it, that's that was speaking of, the, of writing. I mean, that's that's another thing. I think they did a really solid job, and why I found this finale stuck the landing for me, even though, as I said earlier, there were some points where uh, part of the anticlimax too was just. I mean, we know that Tornaga becomes the Shogun, right? Um, and but the point of the what I was going with the writing is they really did tie up all the loose ends with with these characters. I mean, I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm at least with this this aspect of the story. I know where every, everything lands with these characters. Now, if, if they hypothetically, which probably won't happen, but if they wanted to do another season and show how, you know, so to show the battle and how Ito, how Tornaga's first few years of a shogunate is run, then, you know, they could do that. But to me, that would, that would diminish what they've established here. If they did something like that for the cash grab. Why did Ochiba decide to um, bail on Ishido? Uh, it was the meeting with Mariko. She, cause she, you know, when it had that, that, the, the poem, uh, that moment in last week's episode, um, the, the seeds were planted there, um, whenever they had their, their moment there in, in the garden. And then we saw it sort of play out after, I think a Sheba figured, I think there's several things. I think one, she, saw what Ashido was up to. Which uh, what? Uh this basically um leading the leading to leading the country to a pointless war uh with Toronaga. Um one of the factors. Two, I think I think she saw saw that he his fingerprints were all over Miracle's death. Uh as well. So I think between all that and then, you know, she's she's talking to her son, the, the future Tycho, um, you know, she helps him, you know, they have that very poignant conversation and she 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 finishes out the poem that Mariko was was trying to tell her uh, whenever he was trying to write when he was writing when her, when her son was writing that poetry. So I think all those factors, among others, and I'm, you know, I'm sure the listeners will you know feel, feel, feel free to. You know, comment on our on our pages and stuff about what you know other other motivations, but those are some of the ones that that I think the top, at least top of head that come to mind. Yeah, I don't buy it. There's something still. I I understand what you're saying, um, and and there has been seeds planted f- far earlier. Um, I remember at the play, the Taika's um, mm-hmm. wife um, mentioned she chose the wrong side. But at the same time, the Ochiba that we're introduced to, and more importantly, her hatred of Tori Naga, like they committed so hard with that as an introduction to this character that it just seemed weird to me. Mm. It seemed a bit off. And and we talked last week about my feelings about that interaction between Ochiba and Mariko, where it didn't really seem completely in character for me. Um with with how Ochiba responded. Um, so that's probably also why her suddenly deciding to take Toranaga's side didn't really align, where I feel like they focused more in the later half of the season, and rightfully so, on the motivations of Toranaga, Mariko, Blackthorn. Mm-hmm. A little bit of the Abishige. Um and less on Ishido and Ochiba, where once you lose like that threat and that villainous like motivation, things get a bit muddy for me of being like, okay, so. See, yeah, I, I, I disagree with that some. I mean, I think because I mean, I the, know you do. <laughs> yeah, because well, I, and I'm not going to where I disagree is they still focused on it with unless you're. Let me just ask you this for clarification. Are you saying that, you know, the things, it uh, was that sort of resolve for you once he did all his, Ishido did all the scheming to build, you know, to, to get the five 
members of the regents to to be able to impeach Toronaga, and then from that point forward, you're like, I don't know. I just okay. they didn't feel very much like a threat because Mariko mm. already, like, I don't know. It's just yeah, they didn't feel like a threat. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's fine. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I agree with you that the, the the narrative shift did focus more to the the, the, the to Mariko Blackthorn and, and Tornaga. I mean, there's no there's no doubt that that it did. Um, I just didn't know if you had any other thoughts as far as the the, the threat lesson, other than you know, they lost the political game last episode. Oh yeah, yeah. But well, they also, but but they also, I don't know. It just it, there wasn't enough time there where this. I feel like I don't know if it's like I don't know if it's that they I feel like they're much less of a threat. It's just that their motivations for mm. their actions weren't clear for Got me. It. Okay. Like okay. from yeah. the for the first half, it was very clear to me what the political moves were. And then once we understood why Ochaba was siding with Ichido, her decisions were clear to me. Okay. But the later half of the season, it's kind of like as soon as Mariko entered entered the court, suddenly they were stupid. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly they just they didn't. I don't know, especially yeah, Ochaba, because she 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 like I get your point. She saw him leading the country to a um, pointless war, but at the same time, that's the war she wanted. So yeah. I don't, I don't understand. Like she helped him, like feel this. It's this wasn't an Ishido only thing. He needed her in order for like this to really come to head. And then she gets cold feet. Like I don't know. I, I just, I, they, they spent a lot of time in this episode focused on making sure we understood all of the good guys maneuvers and plots to secure victory mm -hmm. and again this is all rightfully so i find it very thin what they did in terms of their quote-unquote villains mm -hmm. they, we hardly got any screen time with them and then suddenly next thing you know we get a letter and then that letter says this and you're just like okay okay but then again at the beginning we talked about how this episode is very much like a prologue and not yeah. A a finale, like a spectacular finale. I mean, the Crimson Sky, to Torinaga's point, that occurred last episode. That's not this episode. This yeah. episode is more of like the aftermath and and people realizing, like, okay, now under this new rule, where is my place? And Blackthorn accepting that he's never going to leave Japan mm -hmm. in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that that that's, and I think that's, and I think that's why I liked this final so much, because it it did kind of subvert, like you, you know, because we did have all this build up, like it's going to be a big war, and we're also conditioned in a lot of ways to like in other in other shows and 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 properties, like we're going to have this big massive third act fight, and you know, and. This is this is going to happen, but here it was really like you said. I mean, and Tornaga said it himself. You know, the Crimson Sky was Mariko, and you know, she and he sent a woman to do what an army couldn't do. Okay. Anything else you want to say about a dream of a dream? Yeah, just the uh, last last point, and one thing that we I know we kicked about throughout the season, um, and just wanted to get your thoughts on it, um, especially with. Uh, Toronaga and Yabashige's um, unveiling of the plans <laughs> right there before his Yabashige's demise. So, do you think at the end of the day, Toronaga wanted to be the shogun, or or for personal gain, or he was doing it for the good of the country? Did he want the shogun? That because all throughout he was like, I'm, you know, and we talked about this before. He said he was trying. His his goal was to follow the Taika plan, which was. You know, his son comes of age and then he takes over. But yeah, I think he wanted to be Shogun. Mm. Isn't there a line in this episode that Ishido or somebody says while they're in Osaka that the earthquake, an earthquake occurred right before t the Taika was mm -hmm. going to go to yeah. war with right Toronaka? 
right before, right right when the council was having their their discussions um yeah they, they had the earthquake yeah, yeah. just yeah. i just but, also I, I thought that was a bit on the news <laughs> you know you know whether oh i absolutely agree yeah. whether or not i just uh this whole like for it's it's okay i just the I'm just going to say this. The absurdity that that people will, would make a claim that, oh, he's just going to be the most powerful person in the country for the good of the country. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I don't. One plus one does not equal two. OK, so somebody please explain to me. And also everything he had to do. Mm-hmm the lives he had to to like he lost his best friend yeah mariko sacrificed herself like honestly maybe toranaga's the real real villain here because because Mm. if he did all of that just for the good of his country then like what the fuck (laughs) you're a psychopath (laughs) the i just there was he there was so much personal loss mm-hmm. um and it and it sounds like it was always headed to this point um that i just i can't i can't say yeah wholeheartedly he had no interest in ever becoming a shogun no no mm-hmm. he he he's a wall facer okay <laughs> That's yeah. that's all I heard. The moment I learned about the term wall facer, I'm like, that's Toronaga, okay? He yeah. he's telling you what you want to hear, but at the end of the day, I don't think you can do that much strategic maneuvering without at least some personal interest in like, oh, and if I do this, then I end up here politically and yeah. Yeah. power wise. Well, I, I, yeah. Um I, I think that's a very. I th- you can make good arguments both ways, uh, and I think Tornaga says it himself. Whenever uh, how does it feel to shape the wind to your will, and Tornaga's like, I only study it, <laughs> and I We're, think that's and that right there. That's not an like, that's not an evil thing. But honestly, yeah, I don't control it. I only study it. Yeah. So like, like, yeah. He he knows that he can only do so much, but. Yeah. That's doesn't mean he doesn't enjoy the power he wields no yeah. no no yeah so. yeah i agree i mean i i i think i think it's a, it's a it's a it's a mixed bag i mean you could interpret it either way i mean I, I think he maybe at the beginning his 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 end goal was to do it for the best of the country but like you said i mean you don't do all that and he didn't waste her death uh you know because he he does maneuver things and put things, you know, studies the situation to the place where things do have one big final conflict. And then, you know, Japan does enter into like 200 plus years of like peace. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it could be mixed motivations here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I also think like that, that's fine. But to say like one or the other, an mm-hmm. absolute, no way in hell. Yeah, I agree. No, there, yeah, there, was, yeah. there was a, a huge amount of personal interest. It wasn't yeah. just that. And and I think there was too many, too many seeds that there were things brewing way before this show started. Yeah. Like Tornaga's been around for a while. So yeah. 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 We awesome. just watched the final chapter in a sense. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, that concludes Shogun, which we will probably talk about again, as it's probably going to end up on Will's best of list at the end of this year. Um, damn, you damn right it will. <laughs> it will. <laughs> um, and that leads us to start our journey with Fallout Season 1, Episode 1, The End. A humble recruit from a post-apocalyptic organization is tasked with scouting the wasteland in search of pre-war technology to preserve it, facing challenges and critiques along the way. Um, We watched both episodes one and two. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to... I know we do this thing where we break down the episodes. 
Um, I am so on the fence about this show. I just have to start. Like, I am on the fence to the point where I don't know how many times I picked up my phone while watching this thing. I got Mm. bored. Mm. Very bored. Um, And I just, I don't, I did not care for these two episodes. Mm. Yeah. And I, I am going to watch the next two episodes, but I don't know. I have, I don't know if this show is for me. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. 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 So I, I like them. Uh, I do, like Shogun where like for, for you, where Shogun, I think about like after I watched the episode and da, 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 da. this one, I watched it and I moved on. I mean, not in a yeah. bad way. It's just like, I see I, what I did like about it. Um, Cause I know there were, you know, Whenever I first saw the trailer, I guess earlier this year, maybe late last year, whenever it was, uh, the inevitable comparisons to The Last of Us, you know, came about. And we talked about it too, um, you know, with video game shows and that kind of stuff. Um, but I, as I, I, well, you know, as I was watching it, I, I got some, some of the boys' vibes from it, to be honest. And that's where I'm feeling like I need to, I want to give it a chance mm-hmm. because I feel like there is a lot of satire in the show. Mm-hmm. So, and that satire, you know, with Amer- you know, in particular, just picking on, you know, the, the picking on the elements of the American dream, sort of like what, and, and, and the satire of it and sort of the world that they built in this show, um, you know, and it's not a, and from what I gather, just hearing people talk about it, it's not a, you know, like unlike The Last of Us, which really adapted the, the game that, you know, for the most part, that was there and they just translated to live action. Here, this show is building on the previous six Fallout games, you know, in that universe and then telling a new story that could, you know, conceptually be, you know, the seventh video game but instead they're just doing a live action with with the the vault 33 dwellers so that's that said i think that those are some of the my overall initial thoughts as far as some of the vibes i got from the show and i'm like okay I, color me intrigued that i will i want to come back before making a final judgment mm-hmm. yeah so in this episode we meet lucy lucy mclean who's one of the vault dwellers um, and there is a trade with another vault. The trade goes south because um, they do get married, but but they um, on the wedding night they also realize that they traded um, that vault would had previously been raided, and so these are raiders um, who are actually not only raiding their vault, but um, were after Lucy's father. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are led by, I'm trying to find her name, Modaver. Lee. Yeah, yeah, Modaver. Modaver, yeah. Yeah, who who um, clearly knows something about the McLeans um, as as she she leaves with after taking Lucy's father, she mentions how much Lucy looks like her mom. Mm-hmm. And she also has a line. There, there's an exchange between her and Lucy's father where um, Modaver says, everyone knows who I am. Do they know who they are? Emphasis on they. Mm-hmm. And they're the result of life's tricky little choices. Um, and so I think I think that I, I like that line because that that does allow for some intrigue of like, OK, so there's obviously something going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's history. Clearly, we're kind of interrupting a story um, and being told bits of information. Uh, so, so I like that, um, and I'm curious about it. And I have some thoughts, especially after episode two. But um, what did you think about this whole trade raid and then hostage exchange? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, so this whole, like, the whole vault concept. So, you know, of course, we get you know, with, with the way the series starts, um, 
you know, we we start 200 years in the past from present day when we, we, we meet the vault dwellers. So it was like right before, you know, and, and you know, so we get this like post, it's like uh, America that like on a divergent timeline that never really grew out of the 50s, <laughs> even though it was like, I guess the timeline for this show is like actually it's in the near future, like maybe 2070s or something like that. As far as when we first, you know, see the cowboy and his little daughter and stuff at, at the um, at the birthday party, and then of course all the bombs start dropping, which I bring that up in that when we fast you know, to, to really get to the vaults themselves, and then like you said, we we when we were first introduced to the vaults, we just sort of see these communities um, very egalitarian in in some regards, um, as far as it seems like the structure. And then also, um, very weird, like, like dynamic too, because you're like, you're treat, you know, you got like these breeders and stuff. So I'm like, is this like some kind of eugenics thing? Right. <laughs> you know, um, you know, especially good when the, the goals are to like, when the radiation levels are low enough, they, you know, they'll repopulate the surface. So there's, but then we see other things happening in this show where it's just like, wait a minute, I don't, there's these other these other settlements and stuff clearly in, in that that are uh, that are above ground. So, you know, to to your point about that line, it, it seems that um, something was going on with Lucy's father that he, that and and Moldover and all these other um, you know factions and people in the in this world uh that you know there is a history there and i guess as the as the season progresses we will, we will learn more about that history and really just sort of seeing how how this whole post-apocalyptic society like developed and you know how people how 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 humanity is like managed over these over these few years and you got these vault vault, vault dwellers who, who you know have a pretty good life you know you know they got the it seems when it, compared to some of the other, you know, compared to the brotherhood that we saw with Maximus, you know, as the next character we're introduced to. And then, of course, you know, we see what eventually happened to the cowboy uh, becoming a ghoul. So, um, yeah, so those, that's just sort of my sort of thoughts there with what's going on with that line in particular and just, just the vaults themselves. Right. Right. Yeah. And and the next character we are introduced to is Maximus, who's on the surface. Um, and we're kind of introduced to our first surface society through mm. Maxim, Maximus. And they're I I don't really know what they're they're the quote unquote police, but they also are a cult. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you can say the vault's a cult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I don't know if they're the police or if yeah. they're just also um, more well-intentioned raiders. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't clear about what they were either. I mean, they seem to be some type of protectors. Protectors of what? I don't know. And then, you know, yeah. and we get some further in the second episode. I know, I know we're trying to keep them, you know, take an episode at a time, but... Um, it does. They all they do seem interrelated in some in some regards. Oh yeah, they, they definitely are, and I think that's one of my issues with um, these first two episodes. Is this first episode because of how you're first introduced to Lucy, you follow her story, and the next thing you know, it's like, oh, now we're gonna switch to Maximus, and then by the end, we get the brief five minutes of the ghoul. Mm -hmm. And and so you're like, OK, these these are our, this is our Scooby game. Next episode, Scooby game gang comes together. Yeah. A lot of exposition, a lot of setup and a lot of me just being like, OK, I'm yeah. waiting yeah. for the story to be. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> and I get it, it's beginning. Yeah. But I this is not this is just not the way I prefer series beginnings to mm. to occur i totally understand what they're doing it's not lost on me it's just not my preference of how to start a story yeah 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 i, I would agree. I, it was i will say it, it it 
the first episode was hard for me to get through. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, because I was like, all right, first episode, yeah, all pilots are always tough. It, it, it had enough, like I said earlier, it had enough there. It got me intrigued that I was like, okay, um, not how, you know, for a post-apocalyptic show, it's like, okay, uh, I'm seeing where everything's set up. The, the, the vault piece was interesting to me. Where it lost me was actually Maximus. I know, right? I, I I completely agree with you. Where I was, I was on board with the vault. Yeah. And then I kind of raised an eyebrow with the stupidly extended, long wannabe James Gunn action play a play a country song during it. I'm like, I've now seen this. I understand it's a very popular artistic choice right now but enough is enough come on we this isn't anything original i'm just gonna call it spade a spade but then we get to maximus and oh my god maximus can we kill him (laughs) 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 because he so far in the episode and a half that he appears in he is so boring he is so boring and i just don't like him there's nothing and you know lucy's a bit a bit annoying been annoying Mm -hmm. but i have a similar feeling about her that i did um as i did with luffy at the beginning of one piece where i'm like i don't know i don't know if i can handle too much luffy but 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 then you meet maximus and you're like oh it can get worse (laughs) 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 yeah and and, and that's the hard thing too is like if you're introducing characters and you're trying you know it would have been better almost not that I'm like a showrunner or whatever, but I almost feel like, honestly, have Lucy's story from one in episodes one and two play out, and then in episode two introduce Maximus or something. I don't know. It was just something just structurally. It just did not resonate with me, and I was just like checked out until you know, I actually liked the Dane character better when within that sequence, and I wasn't really best. I was really not really. I was there, but not uh, with it until, you know, she ended up getting just injured because of the uh, razors they put in her boot. And then and then when they're interrogating Maximus and, and the one thing that did stick out and all of the whole sequence that sticks out with me with him is he whenever questioned by his superiors, he kind of like, no, I didn't do it. But, you know, I'm, you know, I kind of wish it did <laughs> yeah. yeah no i i think that the best part of that was the interrogation scene yeah that that was a really good part yeah um but i just i don't know they i i agree with you you could have allowed us to be in the in the um in the vault for the full episode and maybe have a little bit of her on surface round mm-hmm. And then in the next episode, or maybe just like what you do with the ghoul at the end of the episode, where where we get we we knew yeah. <laughs> Walter Goggins <laughs> wasn't gonna go anywhere. That's why when they first said two hundred years later, I'm like, okay, the math ain't mathing for me right now. <laughs> I know. Um, but then when they kind of explain how the radiation and mm-hmm. he's become this other thing and. And um, how that's all working and they dig him up and to send him on this mission. Like, I think we just needed that. We needed like a 10 minute. This is this is Maximus. This is a brotherhood. Mm-hmm. And then and then you're going to learn more later because having this dual story between um, Lucy in the vault and Maximus and the brotherhood, it just it didn't. It didn't meld. It didn't mix well. Um, and and it just it 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 wasn't that interesting. Um, the next episode, though, when you start to actually mix the pot up and and the people actually start, just my one problem with this is, man, the convenience <laughs> of how these people. <laughs> <laughs> All end up in Philly, are and it and it does is it just with Lucy Maximus and the Ghoul? No, no, no. We have to add in Willicks. 
who is the target in the second episode, the target that Maximus um, and and uh, Lord Titan are are sent by the Brotherhood to retrieve as in the opening sequence of the target episode, we are shown that uh, Willix is a, w- Wilzig, sorry, mm-hmm. I keep saying Willix, Wilzig um, is a mad scientist of sorts, mm-hmm. um, but he likes a dog. So, so we're more importantly, and I and I hope the dog is around for a while. Um, CX four hundred four, and 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 we see them escape the lab with something, um, and and they they're off to Philly, and that's where conveniently everyone ends up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will give them, you know, I guess it's eight episodes. So I will give them credit for not dragging it out. <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah, plot, plot convenience for sure, but thank you for not dragging it out. <laughs> I, I know. And then, so, so because I've already started on this episode, I just want to go to the very end. What did you think when Will Zig killed himself? Uh, Michael Emerson, not there long enough. <laughs> I know. I didn't really, like, like, I don't know. He he he's definitely an actor who, when you see him, you're like, oh, I know the character you're playing right now. Yeah, yeah. I want I wanted more music. I mean, I was I I was like, damn it. The yeah. one thing that like got me intrigued about this show is gone. <laughs> I know it, is. and and every time like like we were getting Lucy was getting a lot of heat from everyone she encountered on surface. I mean, yeah, she's, yeah. she's clearly a vault dweller. Yeah. They were all center. Will Zig was the one person who did it in a way, but also wasn't as patronizing to yeah, her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, I mean, yeah. for, from an ex, to an extent, you almost felt Will Zig should have been in a vault. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> maybe it was and maybe because he maybe knew a lot of, i mean because he, he you know he's like i know who you are lucy yeah. and you know and and so he clearly you know to our to what we were discussing earlier there's a history here with all these characters okay i have my thank you for bringing up that line i was gonna forget it here's yeah. my my theory and what i'm going to put out there and i know 200 years have passed but I do remember in the opening sequence of the first episode, while they're on TV, while while they show a brief clip of TV, and they mm-hmm. mention something about the president's family has gone into hiding. Mm-hmm. I think the McLeans are yeah. part of that family. I think you're spot on with that that yeah. theory. That's a that's and a mean, yeah. And you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make another call back to three body problem. I think. They figured out how to freeze themselves. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, they were. Yeah. 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 Well, know? they were. Yeah. They either they froze themselves or, like you said, I mean, this enough of these because I mean there there is and and that's why I I do like about this show is and and it, they do show with Lucy and meeting the people in Philly they are really getting into some of the class issues and structures and stuff. So to your point. You know, whenever the whenever the Great War happened, you know there was a class of people like like, and I think you're right. I mean, I think that is probably why Vault 33 is special compared to say Vault 32 and some of the other ones. Uh, not knowing anything about the Lord of Game, fair enough. You know, I will freely admit that. But but I, I think don't, it, I don't it, think Vault 33 is special. Well, it it seemed you know it, of of well we not when I say special, just meaning like it just seemed. Uh, to, to be it just seemed to be suburbia yeah no no it, it definitely did um and, and, it, and it's on full display when lucy is out you know interacting with people you know and to your you know and, and will Zig definitely you know he wasn't patronizing for sure and, and saying look you know i'm trying to help you out here kid you clearly you're you're not from around you're lighting a fire in the middle of the night in the wastelands yeah yeah, yeah. And then, of course, her, her, her interactions with my Ma, Ma Jang and um, in in Philly. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I just hope that she and the ghoul have some conversation. Oh, my other prediction. Yeah. Um, I Movir Movir. Mm-hmm. Um, 
That could be the cowboy's daughter. Mm. Mm. Just saying. Just saying. Well, you know. I, I don't know. I it, don't know. It could be. That's a good, that's another, you know. You know, since all these characters are are suddenly conveniently meeting, I I think that there we've been we've been introduced to a bunch of characters that are all going to conveniently be 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 connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, oh, what what did you think about Michael Rappaport being Lord Titan <laughs> tonight? I'm, I'm so glad you pointed that out because I was like, I know him from somewhere. And I think it spells this beautiful that was spot on casting. Oh my God. The only reason why I couldn't like I've seen his work. I, yeah. I know he's in some classic movies, of course. Yeah. But really why he's on my radar right now is because I didn't realize this, but he's a huge fan of Vanderpump Rules and reality uh. television on Bravo. Huge fan. So <laughs> so he like like he does TikToks about it, all all of the stuff. Um, so, so uh, w- the moment they took off, I was just like, this makes sense. This yep. makes sense. I just need him to say the word Scandival and then we have it a day. <laughs> like, <laughs> my God, <laughs> my God. I, I thought that was great. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to talk about the fight between the ghoul and Maximus that I probably spent most of my time like walking around <laughs> doing other <laughs> things during because it went it, on it, way too long. That was another, it was just funny, you know, it was just cartoony. That whole, that whole sequence. I mean, uh, and I, and I, I, I guess they got to do a better job of getting me on board with Maximus because at this point, I, I'm just I'm just not there with him. I mean, I mean he, he's the I mean if if he's supposed to be like I don't know what his role in all of this is. I mean clearly Lucy's the you know she's got her mission. The ghoul is you know, clearly what he is. Uh, Maximus, I mean, I, you know, he may be the, the he gets a short shrift of, of, of storytelling here because he just seems to be well he's consistent in one way. I mean, he's cold blooded. I mean, he, he, you know, like with whenever Dane got her foot cut and he was cut off, and he was just like, I wish I, I didn't do it, but I wish I did. And then how he treated Titus, <laughs> whenever, you know, he didn't give him the stim, the stimulant to help him get healed. I mean, he, you know, he's definitely got a cold blooded streak in him. And and I know they keep that. It did flash back to like, um, how these, you know, the armor warriors um, rescued him. From wherever he was when he was a little boy so i'm wondering if he's just like he's reached his place and we, and we did see elements of this in in the, in the episode both episodes where he may be disillusioned this organism with the brotherhood and so um so when he you well, know when he, when he, when to, he, i mean to understand more about maximus we have to understand the brotherhood yeah yeah. And so so they they did some teases of flashbacks of how he became a part of the brotherhood but we still don't really understand what the brotherhood is in co- yeah. in terms of this this yeah. world. And so so yeah. there there's a lot there. Yeah, and, and, and I, 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 I did do a little bit of I did listen to one video uh mm-hmm. just to help con- to get some context. And I want to yeah. say the brotherhood was like this was just a straight straight backstory video that okay. uh, I watched. Um, and I want to say that they mentioned the Brotherhood maybe showed up in either Fallout 3 or 4. Um, and, I mean, I think they were, like, I guess the quote-unquote good guys. Um, but, so, clearly there may be some, like, elements of it who are who are not um, not so good. So maybe that's why I was thinking maybe it might be a little disillusion with, with, with the Brotherhood. Right, right. Um. I, you know, in terms of this fight, it dawned on me about halfway through why I'm probably not digging the the Maximus Brotherhood type Lord Tinnitus yeah. <laughs> storyline. It is so video game. Yeah. And I know we're watching a show based on a video game, but... You brought it up before the comparison between this show and Last of Us. Last of Us, 
you would get you there were ve- I don't I don't really think there were a time when you could say, oh, we were clearly watching a game based on a video game. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the suit of Lord Tinnitus itself yeah. is just so video game where yeah. you're just like, like oh, and also was- bad CGI. It was bad CGI in my opinion. Yeah. Bad yeah. CGI. So so I don't know. It just it felt much more like they were so focused on being, bringing this game. And I, from what I understand, another thing to point out is um, I think my brother told me he played Fallout. And mm-hmm. Fallout is, I forget exactly the term they use it. It's not the same type of video game that The um, Last of Us is. Because mm-hmm. Last of Us is a story. Mm-hmm. Like, and then there's gameplay in like there's gameplay and then there's these stories and these cutscenes. while I, I, Oh, I think it's called an open player game where okay. it's like, here's the world. And now here's the game and maybe a little bit of story, especially because there are sequels. So you connect, but not, it's not that much focused on an overarching story itself. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think I'm starting to feel that where, yeah, they they did bring a world to life and they, we have some different perspectives on the world with the characters, but I'm just hoping we get our Scooby gang moment where they can all work together because the ghoul needs Lucy and the Lucy needs ghoul right now. Cause we really need somebody to like whip her into shape mm-hmm. and, and Maximus, we just need answers. Yeah. We need to understand or else you gotta go. You gotta go give a, give the suit to someone else or, or you know what? Let's just, get the suit, get rid of the suit altogether because it's not like a CGI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, it, and to, to your thing, I know you mentioned earlier about the dog, uh, CX404. Uh, <laughs> it looks like CX is going to be around because uh, the ghoul did uh, treat him from the yeah. from the wound that he, that he inflicted on him, whatever. Um, so. Yeah, I hope CX and the ghoul, like... It, it looks like they're going to be a, a partner. He, the, the dog seems to be uh, thankful to the ghoul for bringing for rescuing him because at the yeah. end of the episode they were yeah they were together yeah, so yeah and then they're they're all after they're all off to see Madura Madura we gotta learn how to pronounce that name <laughs> oh, Moldaver I think Moldaver. I gotta I gotta watch, I gotta watch it again I've only watched the episodes once one time so I gotta get the pronunciations down <laughs> yeah. Moldaver Moldaver all right well on that note Will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you. Yes, you can find me on Twitter, uh, also known as X, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at S-J Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, Falls and Instagram, and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.